Hello everyone, we are back again with another video, but it's not a critique video today. Today is going to be quite different. I am going to explain and elucidate what my intentions are on this channel, what brought me here, why I'm here still, and what my end goal is. I'm trying to reduce the opacity, I'm trying to be transparent with you so that you guys don't think or believe that there are any surreptitious proclivities that I'm trying to do inconspicuously to satisfy some rapacious or cupidinous desire, basically for money reasons, for monetary reasons only. So, let's promptly start. So, who am I? My name is Edward A. Goki in the channel name, but people call me Eddie. I've been called that basically my whole life. I'm Eddie Goki. I'm 20 years old at the moment, as of January 1st, 2024. It's the new year. And I'm a relatively normal guy, believe it or not. At 16, I developed a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But it's not Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that is typically thought of if people hear the words Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It is not stretchy skin. I have a specific manifestation of it called hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, in which the ligaments, which are what hold bone to bone, are very weak and therefore loose. And what this means is that since these ligaments hold bone to bone, if they are loose, they don't really do that job very well, and the bones move around too much. Now, what does too much mean? Well, it depends on who you are for it to actually be debilitating. For me, it's only a couple of millimeters. The reason that this is debilitating is because if these bones move around too much, again, it only takes a few millimeters depending on who you are, it starts to impinge on the surrounding nerves and arteries. Now, you can imagine how that can become a problem, especially when you're referring to nerves that innervate the heart and arteries that innervate the heart, or the neck, phrenic nerves, vagus nerves, those are the most salient in terms of which ones caused me the most distress and pain, and the entire history as to what I went through during that condition and how that led me to carnivore is listed in extensive detail in the epilogue of my book that may or may not be out by the time that this video is uploaded. It probably won't be out by the time this video is uploaded, but once it is, the link will be in the description below. It's called Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that are perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease disease for over a century. Please buy that book. That little subtext that I just gave to you and that little synopsis is exactly what the book is. Talk about it a lot in my videos, so please buy that. But if it's not out yet, you're just going to have to wait. The reason I can't give a whole video on it now is because it's too much. So this led me to carnivore, however, because ligaments are made up of collagen. There are different types of collagen. I can't remember which type that ligaments are made of, but ligaments are made of collagen. And given the patent demonstrable decrease in robustness of the human species, in the human race since the agricultural revolution, and actually before that, 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, since the extinction of the megafauna actually occurred and started to occur due to a lack of meat consumption and due to an increase in consumption of contraindicated plant material that deleteriously deteriorates and erodes one's structures of their bodies, I'm inferring, and I'm speculating, quite judiciously in my opinion, that this was the cause of my condition. I believe that throughout my developmental years, I did not develop properly due to the complete destitution, or almost complete destitution, of meat and animal products in my diet. The only meat that I ever ate was hot dogs with mac and cheese, and a hamburger here and there, and some chicken breast with my rice that my mother would make me. That's really it. My diet was primarily potatoes and grains, which not only do not provide meat and the structural elements that are designed to effectuate the growth of human tissue and structural elements within the body like ligaments, but also provided an excess of things like lectins that actively deteriorate and attack those structures of your body perniciously and insidiously and glacially over time. I believe that that is what the cause of my condition is. It took me years to figure that out. It took me years to arrive at this place, but here I am. And again, if you want the full details, please read my book, the epilogue section in particular, when it is out. Anyway, along the way, I started studying. And when I say studying, I mean studying. I was debilitated, bed bound for over a year. And so I had time. Now I had time to play video games. I had time to just be on my phone mindlessly scrolling and become anhedonic and placid, but I decided that's not a good idea. So what I did was I decided to study first nutrition and diet from the wrong people, from charlatans, but I did discover Dr. Stephen Gundry first, which as much as I do dislike this man, it wasn't a bad start because it did introduce me to plant toxins and the fact that plants are not always your friend and are not always healthy. So that occurred and then it led me down the right roads, but then I didn't just start studying nutrition because I realized how fallacious and pseudo-sophisticated that 
entire field is, how theological and pseudoscientific it is. I started to study the hard sciences, particularly biochemistry. So I've been studying biochemistry for a while now. I'm not done, nowhere near done, in fact. I came across a few professors, one in particular who was of veracity and credibility, and I listened to him for basically the entirety of the time that I was awake during a day. And that lasted for a year. I started writing essays. I would revise them, hours I would spend on these papers, and then I would save them to a Google Drive folder and send them to my friends and say, hey, read this because this is extremely important. I would use biochemical principles, infer things from those biochemical principles, and apply them to nutrition and health, which is exactly what I do on this channel. And the reasons I did this, there are two in particular. Number one was because I never, ever wanted anyone else to go through what I went through, ever. But believe it or not, that wasn't even the most salient or the most significant of the reasons why. The most significant was the second reason. That reason is, was, because if I have knowledge about something, I have a moral obligation to promulgate that knowledge if it is of veracity and credibility. I feel guilty if I don't. I am a human being, and so I have a responsibility to help the people around me, as long as they accept help and as long as they do deserve it. And so I thought, well, I have a knack and a skill set at presenting things. Now, just to clarify, on this channel, I present with a very placid personality, a very indifferent, insouciant, apathetic approach. But not only that, not only indifferent, not only insouciant and apathetic, but also callous and acrimonious. I'm very angry, it seems. But try and look past the furrowed eyebrows and the vociferous rhetoric and monologue. That is just to get attention and views on my channel. To explain what that is, that is definitely part of me. It's not completely fabricated. It is a part of me, though, that is concentrated and then inflated. So yes, I do feel the way I do on this channel whenever I talk. I'm not going to pretend like it is completely an act. That would be erroneous. That, that would be dishonest of me. But what I want to say is that I'm not always like this. It's just on my channel. So that's a little side note, but that is not tangential. That is extremely important, I believe. But the reason that I made this channel is because I did have that knack and that skill for presenting things. And I decided that would be the best idea for me to actually promulgate this information. I'm very good at explaining and articulating things in an eloquent way. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm not saying this in a haughty, pompous way or a complacent, arrogant way. It's just because I do objectively see that and I also hear it from everyone. I was encouraged to do this as well. I was actually encouraged first before I decided to do it. So my goals on this channel, if you click on my about section, you'll see it very clearly. It is exactly what I just said, which is I am trying to get rid of this misanthropic, fallacious, erroneous information that has been promulgated by rapacious, cupidinous charlatans, greedy charlatans that sit at the top, the upper echelons of the medical system, of the food system, and the agricultural system that has perniciously and insidiously and glacially caused, directly caused, the slow degradation and erosion and deterioration of the human race that has been expedited and exacerbated in especially the last 120 years, but has actually existed since 40,000 to 50,000 years ago, if you look at it paleoanthropologically. It scares me. It scares me that things like this are occurring, and it scares me that people are not standing up to it. People nowadays believe that PhDs and people that go to college and university are smarter, when in reality, now, you can almost definitely guarantee that they have less perspicacity, less credibility, less veracity, and less common sense. I know that it may seem arrogant of me to come on this channel with no administered credence from a government institution, which, like I said, they're indoctrination camps because of how much money has been poured into them to give oblique, skewed information. But the thing is, you do not have to have administered credence by an institution to be able to speak upon a topic sensibly and credibly. You don't need to be a physicist in order to acknowledge the existence of gravity. What you need to do is you need to be able to articulate your beliefs eloquently, accurately, and you need to be able to apply those beliefs sensibly. You need to show some perspicacity and some judicious temperament, and you need to be able to demonstrate patently that you know what you believe to be true to be true, and to be a fact in as much as what we know to be a fact is a fact. That is what actually shows credibility. Before universities, how did people become scientists and mathematicians? You think they were administered credence? No. What I'm also doing is I'm trying to speak to the younger audience, my generation, Gen Z, because we need people in the younger audience and the younger generations to stand up against this. We are the up and coming generation. We're the people that have to deal with this nonsense and the consequences of not dealing with it if it is not dealt with. So I will not stand by and allow this to perpetuate unscathed. So my end goal was kind of answered there already. My end goal is to not only inform people of all generations, but to also imbue in the audience that I draw or entice to watch my channel to be and feel empowered, to actually take a stand against this yourself as well, to make people understand that no, your only option that you're left with is not, hey doc, just give me the pill, because it's 
not. The stuff that I say on this channel is very unorthodox. It is not colloquial. It is very different. It's very fringe. However, it does not mean that it is false. If you don't believe it at first, that's fine. Verify it with whoever you believe to be credible or more credible than I. All power to you, and I encourage that. But I just want to let you guys know, these are my goals, this is who I am, and this is what I intend to do. Now, one more note. If you think that I'm doing this for money, yes, I would like to make a living off of this, so yes, I am trying to make money. I have no problem admitting that. Primarily, I am depending on Patreon subscriptions for that money. I have a $1 a month subscription, a $5 a month, and an $8 a month. But yes, I'm also getting money from anyone that buys Cerule from the link on the screen. Small commissions. I'm getting money from anyone that buys the Kanga machines that I also promote. I'm getting money from YouTube ads whenever I have enough of a following, of course. So ad revenue. I'm planning on trying to acquire money from Twitter, from Instagram. I'm definitely trying to acquire money from my book, my audiobook, the ebook, the physical book. But I would never, ever feel comfortable earning money from doing something or promoting something that I do not believe in. Now, of course, those are just words. If you don't want to believe that, that is totally fine. However, it's all that I can do is say it and also act that out. I'm not trying to be rapacious and stingy. I'm not a miser. So yes, I do have some stipulations as to how you can view my content and what content you can view given what monetary input is given, but I have no problem admitting that because that is not something to feel guilty about. So if you had any worries about me trying to only make money from this, don't worry about it. I am trying to make a living, but I am not doing it to make a living. So with that being said, I hope that you guys learned something. I hope this clarified things for people that had any doubts about me and my intentions on this channel. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment your thoughts below, and speaking of the Patreon, subscribe to the Patreon as well for one week early uploads, uncensored content, pop-ups on the screen not blurred, depending on the type of cut that it is, extended cut, and ad-free. So follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Rumble, I have a Rumble as well, and if you would like to email me any questions, my email is linked below in the description. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next one where I'm probably critiquing some other ignoramus, some other charlatan who believes himself remotely competent to speak upon the area of human nutrition science, biochemistry, and all that other good stuff. So with that being said, see you then.